Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Wet filament has been a big topic recently, so let's do some experiments and also take a look at the fixed dry two spool filament dryer. For those who are impatient, I found that a brand new one kilogram spool of PLA filament straight out of the vacuum sealed bag tends to have between three and seven grams of water in it. And dryers like this one can get rid of that moisture in about eight to 12 hours. I also found that print quality increases drastically with dry filaments. So stick around if you wanna learn more about filament moisture levels, proper storage, and to see whether or not you need a dryer like this fix dry dryer. Longtime viewers will know my struggle with wet filament. Even back in 2015, I made a video about wet ABS, causing bubbles and steam from my prints. Back then, I used an oven to dry out my filament with questionable results. More recently, I shared my favorite filament storage system using these sealed containers with rechargeable dehumidifier. You can check out the full details in the video here. I still stick by this system. It's been working great for me for years. I've also ran experiments with brand new spools of filament the very last step of filament manufacturing is to cool down the freshly extruded filaments in a water bath right before it is spooled. This results in excess moisture in the filaments, more moisture than a single little pack of desiccant in the vacuum sealed bag can absorb. My testing showed that these dehumidifiers will gradually dry out new spools of filaments over about three days after which the humidity level reaches a steady state. But can a dedicated filament dryer do better? Let's find out. Before we begin, this filament dryer was sent to me for review by FixDry. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest experience after using this dryer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, which you can use to help support my channel at no additional cost to you. So let's get into it. First, the quick specs. The FixDry Double NT1 is a two-spool, 110-watt filament dryer. The base of the dryer has four buttons on the front in an LCD display panel. The lid lifts off to reveal two sets of unpowered rollers, which can easily accommodate two one kilogram spools or even a single three kilogram spool. Those rollers allow the spool to rotate, so you can use the dryer as a spool holder while you are printing. I've had no issues with different sized spools. They all fit nicely into the dryer. At the bottom is where the heater and fan sits to circulate air around the spools. There is a removable deflection shroud at the bottom, which forces the hot air up and around the sides of the spools. The shroud prevents direct heat, which could warp or damage the filaments. You can remove the shroud if you are printing with the filament though, as the spool will be constantly spinning in front of the direct heat. For safety though, I'd recommend always using the shroud. The lid itself has 10 holes, two on the front and back, and six up top, with rubber gaskets that fit a PTFE Bowden tube for 1.75 millimeter filament. This gives you plenty of options on how to pass the filament into your printer and use the dryer while you are printing. Fix Dry includes a length of PTFE tubing just for that purpose. The holes also allow moisture to leave while retaining most of the heat. The front panel shows the current temperature, the current relative humidity level, and the time remaining. You can press the menu button to set the temperature and the time. The temperature has a maximum of 70 degrees Celsius, which is useful for PC or nylon filament, but for PLA, it is recommended to set it at 50 degrees Celsius. You can also set a countdown timer in hours and minutes. Afterwards, it will shut off. You can also set it at 000 to keep the heater on indefinitely. So let's run some experiments. I plan on printing a few models before drying, which I'll call the wet prints. Dry the filament in the fixed dry dryer, and then print the same models afterwards, which I'll call the dry prints. That'll let us compare the before and the after to see if drying made any difference. Fix Dry included a one kilogram spool of their tri-colored silk PLA, so I'll use that as my brand new filament. I'll also use this spool of Fulament matte yellow PLA filament, which has been sitting out in the open in my office for the last year. I live in Florida, and the relative humidity in my office is normally around the 55 to 65 percent mark. So if ambient humidity will cause a problem, I'll see it here. As for the prints, I figured fast and hot would be the worst case scenario. So I used a Creality CR10SE and printed at around 300 millimeters per second at 220 degrees Celsius. You can see my full review of the CR10SE here if you would like more information. So I printed my test models, a Benchy, a segmented octopus, and a low poly squirtle. They all printed well, except for the octopus using Fix Dry's tri-color silk PLA. I tried three separate times, but I could not get the small segments to stick to the bed. They would separate from the bed, and I came back to a pile of spaghetti each time. Now let's weigh the filament before putting them into the dryer. The before weight of the tri-color PLA was 1,102 grams, and the matte yellow PLA was 703 grams. I put them into the dryer at 50 degrees Celsius and checked on them every few hours. Here are the results. After four hours, the tricolor filament had lost four grams of weight, and the yellow had lost two grams. After eight hours, both the tricolor and yellow lost one more gram of weight. 
After a full 24 hours, the tricolor PLA had gone from 1,102 grams down to a final weight of 1,095 grams, for a total of 7 grams lost. The partially used yellow PLA had gone from 703 grams down to 699 grams, for a total of 4 grams lost. Both filaments had lost weights, which means something evaporated away. Most likely it is water weight, but it is possible that some other volatile compounds from the additives in the plastic evaporated. I have no way of knowing for sure. So let's print the same models again with this dry filament. Comparing the two, with the wet on the left and the dry on the right, I see some substantial differences in the low poly squirtle. The overhangs are cleaner on the dry, tricolor filaments, specifically the chin and the hands do not have the same defects that the wet model does. The differences in the matte yellow is even more pronounced. Drying the filament made every overhang substantially better. Overhangs seem to be the big benefactor, as the rest of the print surfaces look pretty much identical between the before and after. The benchies both look identical to me. There is possibly a slight improvement to the bridging at the top of the front window, but everything else looks exactly the same. Finally, we have the octopus. The interesting thing here is that I had no problems with the tricolor octopus adhering to the print bed. It printed perfectly the first time with no adhesion issues. I tried three times before drying, rerunning the bed level calibration on the CR10SE each time, and I could not get it to print. But after drying, it stuck just fine. I would love to hear if anyone else had experienced this before, where drying the filament caused adhesion issues to go away. Let me know in the comments if you have, because that was surprising to me. The yellow octopus looks almost identical to the other. There are a couple more blobs on one of the arms of the wet model that isn't on the dry model, but it's subtle enough that I can't say if it was a moisture issue. Finally, I wanted to see if I should dry a new roll of filament before putting it into my storage containers, or if the rechargeable dehumidifiers would take care of any moisture. To test, I grabbed a roll of Filament Matte Blue PLA which had been in my storage containers for the last few months at about 25% humidity. The before weight was 1,062 grams. After drying, this is my result. It is a completely flat line. There was no weight change from before or after drying. This suggests to me that the dry storage boxes with the dehumidifier is doing its job and did pull most of the moisture out of the filaments. So here are my takeaways. One, moisture is bad for 3D printing filaments and drying your filament can improve print quality and even adhesion, even with PLA. It can even be more important with other filament types, especially nylon or PVA. Two, I would recommend everyone have dry storage boxes with a rechargeable dehumidifier inside to keep filament when not in use. Those will ensure that your filament is ready to print at any time. Three, if you aren't pressed for time, then open and keep new rolls of filament in your dry storage for at least three days to dry them out. Vacuum packed bags does not mean that the filament is dry. Four, if you need to dry quicker, or if you're using a filament like PVA, which can be ruined just by keeping it out in the air for a few hours, then a filament dryer is definitely worth it. You can keep the filament in the dryer, so you don't have to remove the filament from your printer if you don't print for a few days. I was pretty impressed by the Fix Dry's Double NT1 filament dryer. It was easy to use, accommodated all of my different sized spools, and it made it easy to use while I was printing. It did an excellent job drying my filaments, and I had no issues with overheating or damaging the filaments. The two-spool version sells for $89.99 US dollars. My viewers can use the promo code HE10 for 10% off of all Fix Dry products if you are interested in picking one up for yourself. Given that this holds two spools at a time, that is a competitive price among other dryers currently on the market. So, thank you all for watching my experiments with filament moisture and my review of the Fix Dry Double NT1 dryer. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to know what other experiments I should run pertaining to 3D printing and moisture, so let me know. And be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on my future experiments. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you all next time.